this is an awesome, incredibly awesome knife. And I, I can say that with certainty, again, because I beat the crap out of it and it held up. It did just fine. Hello my YouTube friends, Late Boy Scout here, finally with my review of the Spyderco Paramilitary 2. Finally, what are you talking about, finally? Just tuned into this video and found it on Google and never heard of you before. Okay, sorry. If that's you, then let me explain. I took this knife on an adventure with a guy named Ben from BladeHQ.com. And uh, here on YouTube, they're called Knife HQ, so tune into their channel. You'll find a video in which myself and Ben uh, took this knife out and we beat the crap out of it, okay? We uh, worked it hard in, uh, in the woods, in the snow, and it performed incredibly, incredibly well. Batoned it sideways into a tree, made a big notch in that tree. Uh, yeah, this is the finish that is still on the blade and still looking pretty darn good. Yeah, you can tell there's some scuffs in it. Of course you can. That's normal, but from a distance, can you? No, not really. It looks still like a black blade that uh, hasn't had too much hard use, but it's had a ton of hard use. So that's why I'm saying finally, because we did that video quite a while ago, and I'm just now getting around to my review of it, of the knife. So my apologies for all those who have been watching my channel and have been expecting me to review this for uh, a while and give you my thoughts on it. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, been busy. That's all I'm going to say. Um, but this is an awesome, incredibly awesome knife, and I, I, I can say that with certainty, again, because I beat the crap out of it, and it held up. It did just fine. This, as you can tell, is the Digi Camo G10 version and black coated blade version. Uh, it comes in a number of other versions. I think you can get uh, a number of other colors uh, for the scales, uh, you know, plain and encoded. There might be a serrated and part serrated version of this knife. I haven't looked at all the different versions. This is the one that I was most interested in, in and this is the one that I got. Uh, I'll credit Blade HQ for that really quickly. Um, they sponsored the beating up of this knife and uh, just kind of pulled it off their shelves and, and gave it to me so I could beat it up for them for their video. And uh, as a result, I got to keep the knife. Okay, so that's kind of how that deal went. Um, I probably, knowing now what this knife can take, I'll probably buy another one at some point. Uh, that's just how much I've come to love this knife and uh, how much confidence I have in it now. Let's talk about some of the features on it and um, you know, just kind of do a little review here. I'll talk about the blade length first. Comes in at around 3.44. Uh, the overall length, 8.28. The uh, closed length is 4.81 from here to there, okay? And the width is not too bad. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but it's sub half inch. I'm sure about that. Um, rides fairly deeply in your pocket. It's going gonna, it's gonna to stick out about that much, and that's acceptable to me if, uh, if you're using it uh, tip up like I do. If you're using it tip down, you're probably going to be looking at about that much of it sticking out of your pocket. Something like that. Either way is going to work great, and uh, you know I just prefer it this way. Huge, huge lanyard hole. You can fit doubled up 550 cord through there, no problem. I've done it. Full flow through construction, which is awesome. Okay, Everything will just kind of fly through that knife. means you probably will never have to take it apart. You can also tell that uh, the liners stainless steel liners in there are milled out in places right there and there and over here and then of course there's the uh, compression lock which is kinda like a liner lock but quite different it's not just the fact that it's on the back okay some people get confused about that and say it's exactly the same as a liner lock it's just on the back it's not exactly the same as a liner lock let's talk about that for a second here's a comparable knife in size, not in price or, or quality. So a liner lock, obviously, the liner, a piece of the liner sort of bends in and then locks that blade laterally, you know, in place. That is quite different from the compression lock. Now, it does also um, sort of come in, sort of like the liner lock does, you know, it kind of springs inward. 
Uh, that's mostly where the similarities end, though. I'll get a light in here and see if I can uh, show a little bit better view. What it does is it kind of locks into a little crevice, a sort of a cavity there in the, uh, in the actual blade. Maybe I can show you that cavity. There it is. So this cavity right here is where that lock fits into. That compression lock goes into that cavity there. Uh, it doesn't just have a flat surface that, in, that it engages. It actually goes into a cavity, okay, into this little cavity, which just does so much more to prevent this thing from moving. Unless that metal were to collapse this way, okay, and that's going to be very difficult. If you think about I-beams in construction buildings and so forth, the reason that they kind of turn them that way is because they're a lot, it's a lot harder to sort of crush something top to bottom than it is to bend it this way, you know? If you were to try to bend this like that, no, it doesn't work. Bending it this way might be a little bit easier. And that's the same sort of concept. Since you've got that popping into this cavity and you've got it sort of long ways there, it has that sort of I-beam effect where um, you know, the, the crushing potential of whatever weight you put on this thing is just going to be that much more difficult. That sort of lateral, not lateral, but uh, vertical uh, pressure you know, can become very, very, very strong and uh, very hard, and it still will not give in. And, you know, I've kind of proven that through the, uh, the hard use that I gave this knife. Talk a little bit more about the construction. I mentioned that it's full flow, full flow through pillar construction. Um, also, it's really cool to note that that G10 is milled out to the point that these liners are actually nested down inside of the G10. Does that add structurally to the knife? I don't think so. It does help, though, um, with the thickness, you know, because, and also ergonomics, I'd say, because you just feel G10 all the way around. That's all you feel as you're grasping that knife. You've got a little bit of a jimping thing going on in those uh, liners up here, and then, of course, a nice ramp for your thumb, and the, the traction on this is perfect. I mean, it's, it's nice and sharp. Okay, for, um, and it actually feels like it's going backwards. I think it is. So it's not only, not only is it sharp, but it's pointed towards your thumb. <laughs> so that's really cool. It's actually pushing back at you as you push into it. Uh, meaning that uh, you're going to get a nice, solid grip on that knife for any kind of piercing thrust. And uh, your thumb's not going to ride up there. Same with the forward finger choil. The sort of choke-up choil, I like, I like to call it. Um, do those teeth go backwards? Yeah, they do. They actually go backwards into your finger, helping your finger to not ride up and get sliced on that blade. We'll talk a little bit about the thumb hole, which is nice and huge. Okay, for easy one-handed deployment. And uh, that's another thing about the compression lock that I really like. It's almost axis, axis lock-like in uh, its usability and how easy it is to open and close. You see I did that there. You can kind of open and close it one-handed and without kind of interacting with the blade at all, just interacting with the actual lock. That's one thing I love about uh, the Mini Griptilian. Let's not show you this one. Let's show you the other one. I like this rarer one a little bit more. I love that about this, the axis lock, you know. Fingers out of the way, easily close it, easily open it. Close, open, you know, without actually touching the blade on the back or anywhere. It's just interacting with the lock, and that gets it open and closed. I love that. Love it. And so I love that I can do that with the uh, paramilitary, too. I will give it a little hit, though. Let me show you this. So that's uh, the actual sort of hilt of the blade. That's this part right here, okay? And that comes all the way up to there. See it? So if your finger fat is kind of down in there a little bit, you're going to feel that thing when it slams back in. Okay? You're going to feel that on your finger. And it may stop it from actually engaging with uh, the, uh, the ball detent and, and actually getting locked in place. And so I've, I've noticed that a few times, actually, that uh, if my finger is kind of digging into that at just the right, just the right way and kind of getting in there, deep, then when I go to close it, it's not, not dangerous at all, it's just that this kind of dull point hits my finger, it bounces back out, doesn't close all the way, 
Again, that's why it's doing that right now, because my finger is down in there. Just something to note about the compression lock. It's kind of a user usability ergonomics thing. Um, I think it's a, a fantastic lock just for strength. And if you pay attention to that, to that fact, you know, that, uh, that that might get your finger and stop from closing, then you can kind of adjust for that and kind of grab it a little bit less in, it's more sort of, sort of towards the outside, and, and it'll usually close about as well, you know, better. And again, with any of these, you know, this, uh, the, the paramilitary two, the, um, you know, an axis lock like, like uh, the Benjamin Mini Griptilian, you have to sort of pay attention to what you're doing and let go of that lock as it's closing, as it reaches that closing point. If you don't do that, if you hold it down, you know, it just bounces right back out. Okay, same goes with paramilitary two. Okay, you got to let go of it when it reaches that uh, open stage in order to let that lock engage. You got to let go of it when it reaches that closed stage in order for that ball detent to engage and actually hold the knife closed. Another thing I want to talk about is the centering. Oh my goodness, the centering is off. Oh no, it's the end of the world. It's really not. It really is not the end of the world. And the only reason the centering is off on this blade is again because I beat the crap out of it in the woods. Yeah, cut a whole lot of pine boughs off of a tree. And once again, batoned it into a dead tree. I mean, did stuff you're not supposed to do with a pocket knife. It survived it. And that's the only battle wound it has, that it's slightly off-center. Maybe a lot off-center, depending on how you look at it, who you are, and what your standards are. Personally, I just don't care. I don't mind. I'm happy, actually, that that's all, all that happened to this knife after the workout that I gave it. Totally happy with that. Uh, the pocket clip is awesome. It's strong. And it engages and you know retains the knife well in pocket. The G10 is good and grippy. I like it very much. It doesn't matter what color it is. It's going to be good. Good G10. Eric and Sal Glesser's um, signatures on the blade. They're the uh, designers. CPM S30V. I think I mentioned that already. A fantastic steel. Um, hard to sharpen. Takes a while. Takes patience. Okay, just be patient as you're sharpening it. You'll get it there. You'll get it nice and uh, razor sharp again. This one still was quite razor sharp after the hard workout that I gave it. So, um, yeah, I couldn't, uh, couldn't complain too much about uh, that hard, somewhat hard to sharpen steel. Paramilitary 2, if I didn't mention it, is the little brother to the military. Uh, very similar in design. Um, a lot of the same look and feel to it. Uh, it's just smaller, you know, it's a smaller blade, smaller handle. And also the uh, military is a straight liner lock, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. I'll probably pick up a military someday, especially if they come out with a military 2 with a compression lock, because I think I like the compression lock better. And I definitely like the four-way repositionable pocket clip on the paramilitary 2. So please, if you come up with a military 2 one day, Spyderco, Make sure it's four-way positionable, make it a little bit deeper than it currently is, and give it a compression lock, and I will be all over that sucker. You bet it. I do love the blade shape. I'll just mention that again real quick. Fantastic. It's like all belly. It's just, just this one great long sweep and a big, nice, flat drop on the top. <sighs> fantastic knife. Really, really fantastic knife. Has lived up to all the hype in my mind. Knowing what this knife can take, yeah, I'll probably buy another one for myself just to, uh, just to have. Well, there you go, guys. That's my review of the Spyderco Paramilitary 2. I thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.